Did you know that eDrawings Professional has a built-in virtual reality viewer? All you need is the appropriate headset, an HTC Vive, and the appropriate environment for that Vive to work in. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up that environment with all your hardware. And in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to get into the eDrawing software and launch the command file open in VR. Let's get right into it. You've just received your HTC Vive headset in the mail, and you're excited to get into the world of SolidWorks VR. Let's get started by examining some of the components you'll need. The headset, which will have a cable coming off of it with three ends, one for power, one for USB, and one for HDMI. This is gonna plug into the link box, which also has three cables coming out of it, one for power, one for USB, and one for HDMI. You're also gonna have two controllers, which need to be charged using standard USB chargers, and you're gonna to need to have your two base stations, which do need to be plugged in during operation. So as you can see from this photo, you're gonna need a lot of power. The controllers are gonna be charged ahead of time and they're gonna operate wirelessly, but the base stations need to be plugged in, the link box needs to be plugged in, your computer needs to be plugged in. If you've got a monitor, that will need to be plugged in as well. You're gonna to need to make sure you've got a lot of power. So I like to make sure I've got a power strip with enough outlets to support the computer, the monitor, one of the base stations, and the link box. And then I make sure that I've got an extension cord to run across the room to the other base station. Now, as far as the size of the room goes, you're gonna to wanna to have a nice cleared area with about two to three meters on each side or about six and a half to 10 feet on each side. When it comes to your two base stations, you wanna make sure that they are positioned on opposite corners of your room layout. You also want to make sure that they are mounted above head height and that the faces of the base sensors are angled down at about 30 degrees. Now, let's take a look at what's involved with the actual setup of an HTC Vive. We'll start by running power out to our central area, plugging that into a power strip, and then running an extension cord so we can get power to the base station that's gonna be a little further away from our computer. Next, we're gonna bring out our headset and no virtual reality setup would be complete without one of these, an official VR headset holder upper. I like to use one of these just to kind of keep my headset up and out of the way and make sure I don't accidentally knock it off the table and onto the floor. Next, let's bring out the base stations. Here you can see a base station, which has a threaded area on the back and also on the bottom to fit a standard tripod. You'll also see that there's a button on the back to change which mode the base station is in. We'll talk more about that in a bit, but for now, we're going to screw this onto a standard tripod. That works great, but unfortunately, we are not above head height. So we're gonna to need to prop up this tripod on something. Here you can see I'm propping up the tripod on the same table where I'm gonna have my computer. Now, I'm actually gonna advise against this because what I learned a little later in the filming was that every time I bumped that table, the calibration of the base station went out of whack and it was pretty annoying. So you definitely want your base station to be above head height, but you should consider putting it on a side table independent from the table where your computer is gonna be. And there's a lot of solutions to this challenge of getting the base station above head height. You could purchase an extra tall tripod. You could mount the base station on the wall. Here's something I like to do. I've got a lot of mic stands around, so I like to purchase these little adapters that go from mic stand to tripod. And there we go. Now we've got something that's above head height. It's angled down at about 30 degrees and uh, it's gonna work perfect for my base station. Once we get these things wired up and powered on, we're gonna to wanna to take a look at the back of each unit and press the mode button until one of the units is set to mode B and the other unit is set to mode C. This will ensure that the two base stations can communicate wirelessly. And now we just need to bring out our computer. Here's the laptop I'm using today. It's by Box Technologies. It's got the required ports for my headset. 
It's powered by a 2.6 gigahertz processor and it's got a Quadro P4200 graphics card in there. So this is gonna be great because I don't need a bulky tower. I can just take my laptop with me to share this VR experience with my customers. Okay, next we need to bring out our controllers. These are all nice and charged and ready to go. And then finally, we need to bring out the link box. Now, the link box is going to communicate wirelessly with the base stations, and it's also going to communicate with the headset where it plugs in via HDMI, USB, and power. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna run the cables from the headset into the link box. We're gonna run the cables from the link box into the computer and into power. And that's pretty much it for the hardware setup of your HTC Vive. Now let's talk about the software setup. You're gonna start by going to the website vive.com setup. From this page, you'll be presented with the download link to install and run all the drivers for your HTC Vive. During the software and driver installation process, you'll be asked to set up your room. You can either choose standing only or room scale. We're gonna choose standing only. Next, we're gonna hold the headset in a position where it can be tracked by both base stations. Once it says headset ready, we can choose next. Now we need to specify what the center of our environment is. Again, we're going to hold the headset in one position and choose calibrate center. Lastly, we need to indicate what the height from the floor is. So we place our headset on a stationary object like this table and we measure to the floor, in this case, 30 inches. We input that value and choose calibrate floor. We choose next and we're happy to see that we're finished with the setup. We're now ready to start using our HTC Vive headset. Before we jump into eDrawings VR, I wanna do one final test to ensure that the headset and controllers are tracking properly. I'll start by turning on each of the controllers and launching the Steam VR lobby. So at this point, you may be wondering, what is Steam VR? And really, what is Steam? Well, to keep it in simple terms, Steam is a digital storefront for video games. It was established back in 2003, and since then has basically become the Amazon of the video game world, both in terms of game selection and in terms of popularity. If you play video games online at all, you've probably heard of Steam. Now, along the way, Steam developed their own client to facilitate the use of extended reality headsets. And this client is known as Steam VR. The Steam VR client gets installed automatically while you're installing the HTC Vive drivers. So you probably already have it on your computer. When you launch the Steam VR client, it helps you to establish connectivity with your hardware and basically just make sure everything is up and running. Now, once we launch Steam VR and we put on our headset, we're gonna see that we're in a virtual reality lobby. And what I like to do before going into e-drawings is just make sure everything is tracking properly. I wanna make sure that I can teleport around the room without any issues. And I like to pick some of these things up off the shelves. In this video, you can see that everything is tracking properly. Both of my paddles are tracking properly. I'm able to pick things up and manipulate things in the room. So I think we're pretty much good to go here. So I hope that helps to clear up the steps involved in setting up an HTC Vive. It's pretty straightforward. Now we get to jump into the eDrawings professional software and go to the command file open in VR. We'll talk all about that in the next video, so be sure to come back. Bye-bye.